welcome to Rouse Rising. If you are new here, my name is Katie and on this channel, I focus on holistic homemaking, lifestyle and parenting. We do a lot of cooking from scratch, but in today's video, I am sharing with you how I manage my home, how I keep it neat and tidy, and the things that I do throughout each day of the week to manage cluttered areas. These are zones, they are not a part of my daily tidy areas. However, these zones are an area where I will spend 15 minutes a day bringing it back to order. So for instance, I might go into the corner where the sauna is and I might clean up that area. I might wipe down the sauna, dust it, clean the glass, clean the door. There's an area where we keep all of our kids' arts and crafts supplies. That area needs to be tidied up as well. Then we have our front area by the door. It's our drop zone. It's where we come in, we remove our shoes, we throw our stuff. The kids' things end up there a lot of the time. So that's an area that I need to tidy. So in this video, what we're gonna do is set the timer for 15 minutes and we're gonna clean up different zones throughout the house. And this is just gonna be the areas that need the most attention throughout the week. So for instance, on Monday, I'm gonna set a timer for 15 minutes and I'm gonna focus on a particular area that needs attention. I'll do the same thing on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and on Sundays, we try to rest. We have a very busy schedule around here. It is soccer season and we have four out of five kids signed up for soccer. So that takes up a whole lot of our time. So what I try to do each day just to manage everything and stay on task is I will get into my homemaking planner and I will write down the list of things that I need to do. I will go through my individual little checklists on here. Each day is a blank day and you have your chores listed and you can add whatever chores that you want to that, to that as well. But what I do is I start my morning by making my bed always. I always make my bed first thing when I wake up because that sets a clean slate for my bedroom. That way if I need to bring a load of laundry in here and fold it, I have a space on my bed that I can do it. It's already neat and tidy and it just really helps me set the tone for the day. The next thing I will do is go into the bathroom and get myself ready head to toe. I've been trying to be really intentional about this, dressing myself from top to bottom, putting on a touch of makeup if I need to. If you follow the fly lady cleaning routine, she recommends getting dressed head to toe, getting dressed to shoes. We do not wear shoes in our home, but I do wear slippers. So there you go. That's what I do. So you're gonna see in this video, I get dressed, I put on my apron to tackle the day, and that's how I typically start. There are some mornings where I kind of get caught up in the hustle bustle of the day, so you'll see that I'm like thrown on a bathrobe or maybe I've gotten cold, so I put on my robe to tackle some of the tasks. These are just my 15 minute focus areas that I am doing each day of the week. In addition to these focus areas, I always, always shine my sink at night. So I make sure before I go to bed that my kitchen is put away, the dishwasher is running, the sink is cleaned out. With those two things alone, when I wake up in the morning and I go into my kitchen to get a cup of coffee and my kitchen is tidy, I feel so much relief. I don't feel anxious. I know that I can start the day, I can make breakfast, and I don't have to worry about washing dishes or clearing my sink or doing anything first. So if you wake up in the morning and you feel like things are out of control and your day is really hectic, maybe focus on tidying your kitchen at night before you go to bed so that when you wake up, you have a clean slate to cook your breakfast, to make sure that you can just jump right into the day without having that sink full of dishes. Ever since I had my first baby, it has always been my goal to go to bed with a tidy sink. That is just a habit that I have implemented in my life. There have been a handful of times where I have not gone to bed with a tidy sink, and that really stresses me out in the morning. It really starts my day out on the wrong foot, and I have learned a valuable lesson to always clean my sink at night. I don't want any of that gross yuckiness throughout the day left in my sink to just get even grosser and dry overnight. Ugh. 
that makes me cringe. So I'm always sure to shine my sink every evening, every night when the kitchen is put to bed. So the morning we wake up, we've got a nice tidy sink. We can start breakfast, feed the kids, get them started on school or get them sent off to school, depending on if you homeschool or your kids are in school. Once all of that is settled and started, I jump right into one of my 15 minute tidy ups and that varies day to day, but it just takes 15 minutes to focus on one area and to knock it out. Then once I have focused on that one area, I will go around the house and tidy up with my basket. I have a designated laundry basket that I use and I go from room to room and anything that does not belong in that room gets thrown into the basket. Then when I go to the next room, I can pull things out of that basket that belong in that room and I can put those items away. I come back around to the first room I started in and the only thing that should be left in that basket is what belongs in the first room I started. So that is one way that I do a quick tidy and once everything is picked up off the floor, I vacuum. So we vacuum every single day in this house. We have carpet at this time. And so the house with five kids and two adults always needs a vacuum. So once the breakfast rush is done, we go through room to room and tidy up and then we run the vacuum real quickly. Now, sometimes I do that and some, as you all know, my husband is home full time. He often takes on that task while I'm getting some work done. So he'll be the one who tidies up and gets the rooms all set so that he can run the vacuum and then that's kind of his thing that he has taken over and he does now. It's been super, super helpful to me. But I also have a smaller vacuum that I use in my kitchen and in our mud room, laundry room area. So a lot of times I get that out multiple times a day just to do a quick zoom around and I will tidy up the floor and get all the yuck off the floor in those areas. So those are the first morning tasks that we do in our day to tidy our house and bring it back to ground zero, as I like to say. In the mornings when I'm getting ready, I will do a swish and wipe of the toilet and sink area. And then throughout the day, if I make it into my kids' guest bathroom, I will do a swish and swipe in that bathroom as well. Usually I do a full on bathroom clean. And on Sundays when I do my big time hair wash and shower routine, I will clean the whole bathroom from top to bottom. But it is a daily swish and wipe every day swish and swipe that we do in the bathrooms just to like five people seven people are using a bathroom it needs it so that is a real quick thing that you can do you just put all the items away in your bathroom wipe the sink down clean the toilet so that you don't get that hard water stain and that is a quick daily routine that i have implemented in our household we also make sure that we're cleaning up the breakfast lunch and dinner area after each meal so that that those areas stay really tidy and then of course i have my daily cooking and cleaning of the kitchen sometimes the kitchen gets away from me and just ends up a total disaster but again i make sure that every evening the counters are wiped down the sink is cleaned out and the dishwasher is running so that i can start my next morning with a tidy kitchen another thing that i do early in the morning is empty my dishwasher and that sets the tone for the whole entire day so that I am able to put dishes back into the dishwasher as we dirty them. It's just a very streamlined process. That way nothing is sitting in the sink for too long. And as necessary, myself or my husband, we just load the dishwasher throughout the day. Sometimes the dishwasher needs to be run midday and then I will empty it again uh, before the evening and then we'll load it up and sometimes it gets run that night. If it's not full, we just leave it for the next day and after breakfast, we're able to run the dishwasher again. So that's kind of my basic routine, how I keep this house clean and tidy and neat. If you are looking for a way to organize and manage your household, definitely check out the link below for my homemaking planner. My homemaking planner has a variety of pages in it. There's notes for dad, notes for dad or the substitute. This can also go for if you are leaving your house and you need to leave information for the person that's house sitting for you. You can have a list where you can keep resources that you're looking for, books you're looking for, items that you need for your home. We also have the summer clothing inventory through winter, fall, spring clothing inventory so you can keep up with all of your family's clothing needs. We have the budget and meal planner section, budget of the month. 
We've got all 12 months in there, but they are left blank so that you can fill them out as needed. And then we go into the weekly meal plans, and then we have our daily layouts. But also in here, we have your prayer lists, we have our passwords, we have the weekly meal plans. And then this dives right into your daily task management pages and these are left blank so that you can fill them out as you use them each page also has a daily bible verse then we skip to the back because this has about 400 plus pages of daily planners and you skip to the back and we have our pantry planner goals for the year what you need to grow in your garden what you need to set aside we've got our pantry inventory sheets lots of those we have our freeze dried food inventory pages so if you have a freeze dryer you can keep track of all of that if you're interested in a freeze dryer check down below in my video's description i have a 50 dollars off coupon for you for the stay fresh freeze dryer so we have that we also have our garden grid plan we have our seed starting logs our seed starting inventory this has everything there's your seed starting log your um, direct sow and transplant logs, pest disease logs, fall garden planning, and then of course your spring garden planning, garden reflections. So garden reflections are like what worked for you, what didn't work for you, that sort of thing, and then notes to keep. We also have a stock record. So if you are raising chickens or livestock, you can keep track of everything that you need to do for your animals. We have layer records and then also the emergency preparedness section. This is essential for every family, for every single household. All that information can be found in this book. And this is my homemaking planner. And this is printed in the USA and it supports two families, two American families. So your purchase means the world to us. Get your life organized, get your planner, and let's jump into this video. I'm going to share with you all about my 15 minute zones for each day of the week, what I focused on for one week. Now this changes week to week, but in this video, we're just going to stick to what we did in one particular week. And I was able to film every day what I set my timer for and what I spent 15 minutes on the clustered areas of my home or areas that needed an extra deep clean. Let's get into it. Before I get started on my 15 minute zones for the day, I always start my morning by making my bed and making sure that this space is tidied first and foremost. This gives me a blank slate that way if I need to fold laundry or put the baby down for a nap, he takes naps on this bed, then this space is nice and tidy for those tasks throughout the day. After I make the bed, I immediately go out to the kitchen and prepare the family breakfast. I take my medicine, get myself a cup of coffee, make sure that the kids are all settled and ready to go to school or start their homeschool, preschool, schoolwork. And then after all of that, I go to the bathroom and I get myself ready head to toe, a touch of makeup. I get myself dressed. I feel really put together when I'm dressed head to toe and I have my apron on. Then I can get any tasks done throughout the day. I can do my work and I can get everything done that needs to be done. So we head back into the kitchen and this is the time when I will clear my dishwasher and clean up from breakfast. So I just give myself those few minutes to get myself ready for the day before I jump into all the tasks that I have planned for the day. On this particular day, you can see the kitchen's kind of a mess, but that's okay. That's breakfast mess. We're going to get this dishwasher unloaded as quick as we can, and then we're going to reload the dishwasher. That's just a quick task that we do every single morning, and that sets us up for success to keep our kitchen sink clean and tidy throughout the day. You can see right here is some of this morning's breakfast. We had French toast with jam on top and I'm just throwing those plates that I cleared from the table back into the dishwasher. 
Once I have the kitchen breakfast mess cleaned up, that is when I start my 15 minute zone for the day. So on this particular day, let's say this is a Monday morning, I am cleaning up the back mud room area. This is also the area where we have our sauna and where the kids come in from their outdoor play. We are still in winter time. In fact, it snowed last night three inches. So we still have all of our winter gear hanging up on that wall there. The kids come in, kick off their boots, put their boots on the boot tray. Sometimes their clothes make it on the rack and in the baskets. Other times we have to give this area attention and put everything away. So I just did a quick tidy of those items. And then my focus today is this sauna. It needed to be dusted and the glass needed to be cleaned. This sauna gets super dirty or rather it gets a lot of use and with a lot of use we get lots of fingerprints, lots of sweat smears, that sort of thing and so it does need to be cleaned every week or every other week. So on this day I'm focusing on dusting it and cleaning this glass. We love this sunlight and sauna and we use it about two to three times per week. We use it to boost our immune systems, to help our bodies detox, and to help with our aches, pains, and inflammation. It's been a great addition to our household. We bought it at the beginning of 2020, right at the beginning of the pandemic, because we knew that we would need to help our bodies and boost our immune systems. And this is one of the things that we purchased to allow ourselves that self-care and I've really enjoyed it myself. I try to use it three times a week, but most of the times I might get in it twice a week. And like I said, the kids use it too. They get in it for about 10 minutes. When we use it, they really enjoy it, but they put their hands all over it and the glass just gets really smudged up. So we're just taking 15 minutes to give this special attention. I've sped this video up, but I do have a timer set so that I don't spend any more time than 15 minutes because otherwise I would be here all day. On another day, I'm going to focus on vacuuming out the inside of the sauna, but on this particular day, it was just getting all of the jackets and snow gear put away and cleaning and dusting the glass and the outside of the sauna. Oftentimes brands send me items and this item was in the next area that I needed to tidy up. So on this particular day, I'm going to spend 15 minutes unboxing this product and getting it set up in my kitchen. That is something that I need to do on a weekly basis. I have to deal with the brand products. Otherwise, they will just build up and build up and build up throughout my home. So I've already tidied up my kitchen and we're going to get out this Oriamo ice maker, get it set up and get some ice made in it. The first thing we have to do is get it out of the box and allow it to sit for 24 hours. But since it's been sitting upright since it was shipped to me, it's already ready to go. All I have to do is run a cleaning cycle or run a cycle with water in it just to get the inside parts and pieces all cleaned out. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm gonna wash out the basket clean with warm soapy water. And then I'm gonna dump some water into the ice maker and get the first batch of ice going. I'm gonna dump that ice out before we start making ice for consumption. The great thing about this ice maker is it makes ice super fast. So within about a half hour to an hour, it is full of ice. Okay, this is our Oriamo Nugget Ice Maker and I'm just filling it up right now to the max fill line. Oops, there we go. It's up to the max fill line. You can see it is right there. We just replace the basket, put in the scoop, close it, oops, and then the power is on and 
power is on and it is making ice. It will tell you when you are low on water and also every once in a while, especially if you're like our home and you have hard water, you need to clean it. So it will tell you when the ice is done. What I like to do is take that ice and put it in Ziploc bags into the freezer so that we can have it for the coolers or for different activities for our drinks to ice a boo-boo, that sort of thing. So I make a bunch of ice at once and then I put the ice maker away until we need to make more ice again. The ice maker task was on Tuesday, so on Wednesday I am tackling this book corner. So this was an area that needed major attention because the kids draw and they make comic books, they do their schoolwork, they do all sorts of things with this cart right here. So this cart needed to be organized, the papers needed to be gone through, I needed to save the paper that was not used and throw away some of the paper that had been scribbled on. Also lots of workbooks, lots of activity books get stashed in here as well. So I'm just going through and organizing those. The books that have been completely filled up and used, I'm tossing in the pile to be trashed. And then the ones that still have plenty of pages left to be filled, I'm sticking in a separate pile. And then we have our marker crayon pile. We have our miscellaneous pile. So I'm just going through and making sure Everything is organized where it needs to go. Sometimes the kids' toys get placed in this cart, so those toys also need to be organized. And you can see on top there is a mess of pencils and crayons, markers, that sort of thing. Every once in a while, probably once a month, the kids and I sort through that and we get rid of all the dried markers. The broken crowns go into a special bin so that we can melt and make new crayons. And that gets dealt with periodically as well. But right now I'm just focusing on organizing this cart, getting rid of the trash, and making sure that my kids have access to activities and books that can keep them busy during times of the day when they need busy. I'm also going to be quickly organizing this bookshelf. I made sure all the blankets in the blanket basket are folded and the blanket basket's gonna go beside the cart and we just kind of keep all those blankets stashed there. It is winter time, it is very cold, so those blankets get used on a daily basis. Next, I'm just going to put everything where it belongs and I decided to move the cart over by the table just so that the kids had easier access. It's Wednesday and I have another product to share with you. So on this particular day, I took 15 minutes to strip the bed. I tried to wash all of the bed linens once a week in each room of the house. So on this particular day, we're gonna focus on the king bed in the master bedroom and the kids sheets all get washed on the same day as the master bedroom sheets but on this particular day I have this product to unbox and throw on the bed to test out. I was sent this pillow top mattress topper from Rainmar. I will leave a link down below in this video's description for you to check out in case you are interested in one of these. It is stuffed with memory foam and at first I had quite an aversion to the smell of the mattress topper. I'm not sure if it was off gassing or what was going on, but I unboxed it, I unrolled it, I took it out of the packaging. You can see it comes flat rolled like this and then once you take it out of the plastic it blows up. I left it on my bed for the day to air out and to off gas a little bit. I even hung it up outside for a while to get rid of the smell that was there and after about 24 hours it was no longer smelling funny. If you have any experience with memory foam, then you know when you first unbox your memory foam products, it does have sort of a chemical smell, but after a few days, that smell dissipates. So at first, I totally had an aversion to this mattress topper. I contacted the company and asked them about it, and they said that they don't use any fragrances or anything to mask the smell of the memory foam, but that memory foam definitely has a distinct smell to it. And once I put the mattress topper back on my bed, I have slept on it for a week and I've really enjoyed the comfort. 
Thursday's task was going through all of my four-year-old's clothes. Her drawers had become a complete disaster. So what I'm doing is sorting through what fits, what does not fit, clothes with holes in it, gotta go. And then I'm making outfit sets for her. So I'm rolling up pants and a shirt or a dress together. So all she has to do is grab out a roll and it's got her clothing for the day in it. I also went through some of the clothes that she is going to be growing into for spring and sorted through those and got those organized. And that was Thursday's task. Friday's 15-minute task was putting together this garden cart. This is a Vavor garden cart, and it is just in time for spring and for a trip that we are going on. We were able to assemble this cart in less than 15 minutes. It was super easy, and we took it right outside and started picking up sticks with it. So that was really fun. The front articulates and moves around so you can steer it easily. And as you can see, we have lots of pine cones and sticks to pick up. Usually we do it with a wheelbarrow, but now we have the wheelbarrow and this cart. In addition to that, it was easy to take apart to travel with. So we took it apart, threw it in the back of the truck and took it on our camping trip with us. We were able to transport items back and forth from the truck to the camper. I was able to pull the baby around in it and keep him <laughs> contained. It was awesome. We really like this cart from Vavor. Check it out below in this video's description. Next up, this is our entryway laundry room, entryway from the garage. Over on the left, I've got my laundry machines. And over here on the right, we have our pantry extension. This gray table gets cluttered every day it seems like and at least every other day or every couple days i declutter the items i make the kids take the things that belong to them to their room and trying to manage any drop zone of an entryway is always a bear especially when it's a multi-purpose room and like i said this was the laundry room this is the ex pantry extension to my left i also have a countertop and cabinet space that is work for my postpartum doula work so that's a whole different zone but right now what we're focusing on is cleaning all the lids on these buckets i want to get the table completely cleared off so that i can scrub the tabletop and then i want to focus on taking down all of my herb jars and wiping off that shelving we live on a dirt road and we live in the high desert so when cars drive by, it kicks up a ton of dust and we are always fighting dust in this house. So dusting is a constant chore, but when you live in a 2000 square foot home and you have lots of surfaces, the dust settles in every single crack and crevice. So I've got to make sure that I am staying on top of keeping the dust at bay. And I do that by dusting areas 15 minutes a day I spend intensively working on one area and yes some days I spend that 15-20 minutes putting together products or dealing with products from different people and that's just a a way that I can focus intently on a task and I make sure that I do that every day because my days are completely consumed with caring for my family, cooking for my family, managing family tasks, and then all of the daily cleaning tasks that we do every single day. I have to set aside 15 or 20 minutes to do intensive cleaning or to unbox and build things and that sort of thing. So I'm still learning how to manage work life, home life, working from home, and having my husband home full time. I'm still adjusting to that, you all. It has been four months or about three to four months since Aaron has been home working, teleworking from home full time. And that's after 12 years of me doing everything at home, and I, I'm talking everything, I ran the household, I did all of the outdoor chores for the most part, including mowing, gardening, building fences, painting the porches, you name it, they have all been my tasks. And now that I have Aaron around, I'm learning to delegate tasks to him and finding things for him to do and figuring out what it is that I need to do. So on days like today, getting this one corner dusted and cleaned, it took me 18 minutes. I 
was able to review the footage. I've sped it up and time-lapsed it for the purpose of this video, but just cleaning this table underneath the table and these shelves, that took me 18 solid minutes. And you see Aaron walking by. Aaron is actually preparing a meal for the kids for when they get home from school. He is making deer steaks and he is making chicken livers. And then after this task, I'm gonna go and steam some broccoli and cube some sweet potatoes so that I can have dinner ready for the kids when they get home. Because after they get home, we are having dinner and then we're rushing off to the various soccer practices that we have. So our days are jam-packed managing this family and being able to set aside 15 minutes a day or 20 minutes, sometimes it turns into an hour, but saying, okay, I'm going to knock out this one task today. I'm going to clean this one area today. That has been a game changer for me because it allows me to say, this is what I need to do and this is what I have to do today. And it's not the only thing that I'm doing, mind you, there's all the other workings of the family and meal prep and food management and child management and diaper changes and activities for the toddlers and keeping them safe and busy. But these 15 minute focus times are very intentional spurts of time that I'm going to knock out something that I'm not going to get to for another month. So the products that I've shown you in this video, those were things that needed to be done. Those have been sitting around my house for a while. And if you are a YouTuber or if you're a blogger or a vlogger, then you know you get sent all sorts of things from different brands and you agree with these brands that you will show them on your channel briefly or in a video briefly. And being able to that is work. I'm going to tell you, being able to make time to do that in the midst of life and running a channel and running a blog, it is work to try to fit those products in different places. So in this particular week, when I was making content for this video, I was like, okay, Katie, you have got to do these things. These things have to be done. The garden cart needed to be done because we are in approaching, or at least we are fast approaching garden season, I needed to build that cart because we have got to get all of the stuff in our yard burned before burn season is upon us. There comes a time in the year where they ban burning, but up until that time, and it's usually around May, up until that time, we can burn all of our yard waste. We can burn branches, we can burn pine cones, and living in the woods, there are a lot of branches and there are a lot of pine cones. So it was absolutely necessary that I got that cart built because I'm going to be spending the next few weeks burning and working out in the yard and getting the garden cleared and dealing with transporting dirt and things, bags of dirt, bags of different things for the garden, uh, fencing supplies, gardening supplies, and that cart is essential to getting all of that work done. So I had to take 15 minutes of my cleaning block zone to knock that particular project out because we had been staring at that cart for the last month going, oh my goodness, when am I going to do this? I need to implement this into one of my 15 minute cleaning times because otherwise it's not going to get done. That's just how we do it around here. And so I encourage you to set aside 15 minutes, 20 minutes a day, set a timer and knock out that area or that project that you can do in 15 to 20 minutes, just go ahead and set your timer and knock it out, get it done. You're going to feel so much better because of it. You're going to have a clean dusted space. And no, I don't dust my whole house in a day. Uh, I do it in these zones. So when you saw me clean that cart, the craft cart out, uh, there was another time, maybe later on in that day, I finished organizing the bookshelf, but I didn't actually catch it on film. But I finished organizing that bookshelf, and I was able to wipe down the shelves on the bookshelf, and the top of it, I got dusted. So that was just something else that I was like, okay, I've done the cart, and I've done the blankets, and now I need to focus on getting that bookshelf done because I need that zone to be knocked out and to be done. Then I can focus on my vacuuming and picking up the toys and doing the laundry and the dishes and the dinners and all the things. So these 15 minute spurts in the day have really helped me 
knock out some things that I wouldn't otherwise get done, things that I would ignore or say, oh, I don't have time for wiping down those shelves. I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. Actually, yes, I do. I'm going to set aside 15 minutes and I'm going to work diligently and intently and I'm going to get it done. Another thing I did was I vacuumed off all of the bucket tops. And if you know about these five gallon buckets and these two gallon buckets and the gamma seal lids, they have lots of ridges in them and dirt gets all on them. So I had to clean those up. Thank you so much for joining me today, doing a week worth of 15 to a half hour minute zones. I know some of the zones took a lot longer than I planned, but the goal is to do things in 15 minutes so that you're not spending your whole day committed to one particular task. So try to keep it 15 to 30 minutes don't go over that. What you can do is come back to it another day, another time, because you've got so many other things going on in your household, limiting it to 15 to 30 minutes, 15 minutes if you can, and get as much done as you can in that allotted time. And then you can move on with all the rest of your day's tasks. That way you're not getting so incredibly overwhelmed with the one checklist item that is taking so much time to do. Just do 15 minutes today and if you have to come back to it next week to finish it up, finish it up next week. Thank you all so much for joining me. Stay tuned. I'm going to have more cleaning videos like this, more cleaning motivation. Click the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you next time. Bye!